In this lesson, we're going to look at equivalent fractions. And the first fraction we're going to look at is one half. This is the first example of five groups of examples. So what we want to do is find an equivalent fraction to one half. An equivalent fraction is a fraction that is equal to one half. So if, for example, we multiply the denominator by two, then in order to achieve an equivalent fraction, we must multiply the numerator by the same amount. So what we have is 2 times 1 on the top, which is 2, and 2 times 2 on the bottom, which is 4. So our new fraction is 2 quarters. Is 2 quarters the same as 1 half? Well, if you use your common sense, then obviously that is true. That's one that we come across often, so it's one that we can see definitely one half is the same as two quarters. We can see that the fractions are equivalent. So starting with one half again, if we wanted a different equivalent fraction, then for example we could, instead of multiplying by two, like the previous example, we could multiply by three. Three times two would give us six on the bottom, and 3 times 1 would give us 3 on the top. Our new fraction would be 3 sixths. 3 sixths is equivalent to 1 half. But instead of multiplying by a number, we're going to take this a step further. We're going to multiply by a letter. So what we're going to do is multiply the bottom by M. If we want an equivalent fraction, if we multiply the denominator by m, then we must also multiply the numerator by m. m times 1 is m, and m times 2 gives us 2m. Our new fraction, m over 2m, is equivalent to one half. Example number three. This time we're going to start with one third and we're going to multiply by not just a letter but a whole expression this time. So we're going to multiply by 3a plus 6 on the bottom. So if we multiply a denominator by 3a plus 6, then in order to achieve an equivalent fraction, we must multiply the top or the numerator by the same amount. 3a plus 6 times 1 gives us 3a plus 6 on the top. That's our numerator. And 3a plus 6 multiplied by 3 gives us 3 bracket 3a plus 6. Using the same logic as before, we can see that our new fraction is equivalent to our original fraction. Example number 4. Which of the fractions below are equivalent to 3m over n. At first glance, it's hard to tell if any are equivalent to the fraction in the box. So what do we do? Well, if we simplify, then if any of our fractions are equivalent to the one in the box, then after simplification we should be left with 3m over n. So if we look at the first fraction to begin with, we have 3m squared on the numerator and m n on the denominator. So what that means on the top is actually 3 times m times m. And on the bottom, we have m times n. 
So what we have is 2m's multiplying on the top and we have 1m multiplying on the bottom. That means one of the m's on the top can be cancelled out with one of the m's on the bottom. That leaves us with one of the m's left on the top which leaves us with 3m on the top and we're left with n on the bottom. After simplification, we can see that our new fraction is the same as our original fraction, so 3m squared over mn is equivalent. Looking at the second fraction, well, on the top line we have an a multiplying, which can be cancelled with the a, which is multiplying on the bottom. We have an m in the top, an n in the bottom. We can't simplify those or cancel. But what we do have is 12 on the top and 4 on the bottom. This can be simplified. 4 goes into both of those numbers. 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 12 three times. That leaves us with 3m on the top line and 1 times n which is just n on the bottom line. After simplification, we have 3m over n, which is the same as our original fraction, so we can see that this one is also equivalent. What about the third one? Well, we have 6 times p times m on the top and 8 times p times m times n on the bottom. The first thing we can cancel is one of the p's on the top with the p on the bottom. And also we have an m multiplying on the top which can be cancelled with the m on the bottom. We have 6 and 8 which can be simplified. 2 goes into both of those. 2 goes into 6 3 times and 2 goes into 8 4 times. That leaves us with 3 on the top and 4n on the bottom. So after simplification, uh, fraction this time is 3 over 4n. That's different from the one in the box. So the third fraction is not equivalent. In this example, we are asked to express these fractions with the simplest common denominator. So what does that mean? Well, simplest common denominator, all that means is we want the numbers on the bottom of both of the fractions to be the same. This will be familiar because when we are adding and subtracting fractions, that's what we also need to do. Uh, in this case, we're not adding or subtracting, we just want to express both fractions with the same common denominator. Often the best way to do this is by multiplying each of the denominators by the other one. It doesn't always give you the simplest common denominator, but it's often a quick way of doing it. In this case, it will give us the simplest common denominator. The lowest number that both 4 and 3 goes into is 12. When we come to do uh, some of our later fractions, which have uh, not just numbers but expressions on the bottom, then that is definitely the way to do it. So, using that technique, we have 4 in the bottom here, which means we're going to multiply by 3 which is the other denominator. In order for a first fraction to stay uh, the same or equivalent, we must multiply the numerator by the same amount. In order to, uh, in order to make this one have the same denominator, what you need to do is multiply by 4, the denominator from the first fraction. So a fraction must stay the same, which means we must multiply the numerator by the same amount. So, putting down our fractions again, then we have 4 times 3, which is 12, 
and 3 times 4, which is also 12. 3 times 3 on the top, which is 9, and 4 times 1, which is 4. We now have two fractions with the same common denominator.